Hello, everyone. I'm Kat from the Wild Alaskan Company recipe team. Um, I hope today gets you really excited to cook seafood from Alaska, whether it's new to your kitchen or, you know, maybe it's already your go-to protein. Um, today, we're going to be steaming a filet of fish um, today in a packet of parchment paper. Um, so this is a cooking method called en papillote. Uh, it sounds very fancy when you say it in French, but it's very, very simple, super accessible for anyone to make, whether you have parchment paper or foil. Um, I'm really excited to share it with you. Some of you might already be familiar with this method just on your own terms. Um, we also have featured this in the past as part of, um, I guess, like what I like to call the new member orientations. Um, we uh, have a series of events every now and then that is I think a great place to start if you're new to cooking fish. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll get to that later because let's talk about today. Um, before we get to the recipe, just some housekeeping, I invite you to follow along with captions at the bottom of your screen. There should be a button that says show captions or more with three dots. Um, and there you can uh, follow along with captions if that makes it easier. Um, and if at any point you need to leave during the event, um, don't worry, we'll send you a link in the next day or so. Um, we're also, I believe, live streaming from Facebook right now. So um, on our Facebook homepage, you can access this immediately after the event is over. Um, and let's see, if you have questions throughout the event, um, feel free to drop those into the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. That'll help my team field the questions to myself or answer them on their own. A lot easier than if they're in the chat, but wherever you put your question, hopefully we'll find it. So. Um, I'm joined today by a few of my teammates from the member experience team, uh, probably some familiar faces to you if you have been to one of these before, if they want to come on to camera to say hello, um, you can reach out to them anytime you have a question, uh, even after the event, uh, Sinana has hosted, um, these cooking events before and Carl's definitely been here as well. So, um, all right, let's get to the recipe. Um, we're going to drop the link in the chat if you uh, don't have it pulled up already or want to follow along. Uh, we're making a white fish steamed and papillote with garlic and lemon and just some oregano and cherry tomatoes in there to give it a little bit of a Mediterranean feel. Um, the recipe itself is featured in the Live Better Wild meal plan that I mentioned earlier today. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a four week meal plan that we put together to help you eat more seafood more often, just on a regular basis. Cause it's very easy once you have these go-to recipes and the right things in your kitchen. So um, it's inspired by the new year, of course, which is a time when a lot of us are trying to be better to our bodies, to ourselves. Um, so this is um, also a recipe we've done many iterations of, and it's just really one of my favorites. Um, you know, you can mix and match the ingredients, but we'll get to that a little bit uh, later. Um, in the chat, we'll just go ahead and drop the Live Better Wild sign up. If you don't know what the meal plan is, um, you'll basically receive a mini downloadable um, cookbook, like a digital cookbook that has recipes and um, cooking tips. So each week has a theme. This week I mentioned earlier is fish and vegetables together for a really nutritious pairings or better pairings. Um, and then actually the next two recipes, next two recipes. Yeah. Actually the next one recipe is going to feature, um, or the next event is going to feature uh, a recipe from the guide as well. So you can meet us here again, if you want to live better wild. So, um, for today, uh, in the chat, we're going to drop the ingredient list, but I'm going to be using, if you want to switch over to my overhead camera, Sonana, I'm ready to cook. Um, so I'm going to be using Pacific cod. I have just a single filet that I have a quick thought on, on my countertop right before the event. So I had this in um, like a little plastic baggie on the counter in a bowl of cold water um, for about 30 or 40 minutes before this event getting ready. Now I'm just making sure it's nice and dry. Um, you can pat it dry with paper towels or kitchen towel. I like using kitchen towels because I just cook so much seafood that I go through way too many paper towels. So got spinach, or actually I don't have spinach. The recipe is written for spinach, but I'm actually going to use some frozen broccoli because that's what I had in my freezer. And 
in New York, it's very cold outside right now. So I did not want to go out to buy spinach. Um, all I did was thaw these in a bowl of cold water. I put it in the water, in a different bowl of water about the same time as I put the cod in, if that makes sense. So these are just defrosted to room temperature at this point. Um, and that was like from a, a bag of uh, frozen broccoli that I bought at the store. I've got some garlic, lemon, cherry tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil and some salt and pepper for seasoning, just crushed up together here. So um, like I said, how did the fish dry? This is a good habit to just do with any seafood um, so that you avoid watering down the meal. Um, it's really important when you're using a hot cooking, a hot and dry cooking method, like searing or broiling um, or baking even, and definitely grilling. Um, but even when you're using um, like a, a, a cooking method that's like steaming or poaching, I like to just pat the fish dry um, to get off any like excess ice uh, that might be lingering on this if it's not fully, fully thawed. Um, and yeah, like I said, just I want I want like tasty juices. I don't really just want like fish water <laughs> in my meal. So this is nice and dry now. Um, what we do when we're cooking something in papillote is we need to make a pocket or like a little envelope out of parchment or foil. Um, you can use either. I like using parchment because um, supposedly it steams things a little more nicely. Um, there's not a lot of excessive steam that gets trapped like on the top of, if you're using foil, there's going to be a lot of condensation, whereas this sort of soaks up a little bit of the liquid. Um, but it also just looks a lot nicer when it's done. It's not like this crinkly, crinkly mess. So um, we're going to start by layering this. Well, first of all, size wise, just eyeball it, um, pull out a piece of parchment, uh, measure it out to fit the piece of fish that you have. Like if just like wrapping a present, this looks like about the right size for this particular shape of fish. So um, there, we're gonna start by putting this onto a sheet pan just so it's a little easier to build. And I'm gonna put my vegetables on the bottom of the envelope. Um, I like doing this with any vegetable, whether you're using asparagus or um, wilted or using spinach, um, like the recipe has written originally. Um, but this just creates a ni nice little platform for the fish to um, rest on. So uh, I like to do a little olive oil right on top there, maybe some seasoning. And then to that, Let's go ahead and put the fish right on top. A little more olive oil. Um, if you don't have fresh herbs, this recipe is written to be made with fresh oregano. You can always use a dried um, herb in something like this because the dried herbs will rehydrate as the steams. It's not going to be quite as aromatic as using fresh oregano, but if you don't have any, have any in the fridge right now, don't let that stop you. Go ahead and use whatever dried oregano you have sitting in the back of your pantry. No matter how stale it is, it'll pick up a little more life as it steams in this packet. So that's gonna go right on top like that. Um, feel free to swap this out for a different herb as well. Thyme would be really nice in this, either fresh or dried, um, and perhaps even basil. Um, if you happen to have fresh basil would be super, super nice. So that is um, where we are right now. Let's do some lemon right on top. I just have some super thin slices of this. Um, this is going to add a little bit of the moisture that we need to steam this fish. There's some moisture in the vegetables. There's certainly some moisture in Pacific cod. It's a fish that has high moisture content, which can make it a little bit tricky to cook sometimes. Um, but in this, it'll be perfect. And then the lemon will add a little bit of moisture and all these really nice essential oils that are trapped in the skin are gonna have a chance to steam and infuse and become a really, really tasty flavor in here. Uh, just gonna drop in some tomatoes. It seems sad that there's just four. Let me add a couple more. <laughs> um, we'll do six of them. Let's go crazy. So six cherry tomatoes. Um, you really can't add an, like too many vegetables in here. So, um, this is sort of where the mixing and matching and making this your own 
recipe comes into play. And then uh, some garlic, uh, which I will mince and just scatter on top of here. Um, if you're not a big fan of garlic, you can always skip this, but as it steams, it'll mellow out. So even though uh, we're putting it in raw, by the time this is cooked, um, it won't have that really strong spicy bite. So I'm just gonna scatter that all around in here. Yum, that already smells so good. I'm a big garlic fan, so any anything with garlic, I'm I, anything that doesn't have garlic, I'm very suspicious of. Um, but this is gonna go right in here. Maybe one more drizzle of olive oil, just for good measure. And then now this is the fun part. Actually, that was all fun, but I really love this moment of folding this into a packet. So the trick to this is starting from, I'm gonna turn this around because I find it easier. You wanna start from a corner and begin to pleat the edges as if you're making a dumpling or some sort of calzone. And you're just gonna go all the way around like this. And try not to lose any tomatoes in the process. And just like that, you have a nice little packet. It's not gonna be hermetically sealed, that's okay. Um, also, sorry, my sheet pan is so cooked and baked on. That's because I don't always use parchment, but um, this is just gonna go straight into the oven as is. I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees, nice and hot. Um, and we're gonna let this fish cook for maybe about 10 minutes. So let me go ahead and turn my back for a moment. <laughs> And it looks like got 316 on the clock. So I'll keep an eye on the time as it's cooking. So um, if you wanna switch to the other camera, Sanana, does anyone have any questions right now? I, I wanna talk about this method a little bit more um, cause I think I have a few notes, but um, any questions? Um, so far uh, we had one, what kind of seasoning are you using? So the seasoning I used for this was just a, a salt pepper mix. Um, I just happened to have some salt and pepper crushed up together. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. You could add, um, if you wanted to, any sort of dry seasoning to this. Um, perhaps if you don't have garlic um, in your kitchen right now, like fresh garlic, you could use a little bit of garlic powder mixed into that. Um, if you want like a little hint of spice, something like cayenne would be nice, but because this is a steamed recipe um, and the flavors are so delicate, I like to just keep things really sort of fresh and 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 clean tasting and not use too many like spices um, for this particular version of um, of the recipe that I'm making. So um, great. And then, uh, sorry, there was one more. Do you rinse your fish first? I actually don't rinse my fish first. Um, I find that that's it's not a necessary step. What you might want to do um, is if you are defrosting the fish, whether it's in the, uh, not the oven, whether it's in the refrigerator or you're defrosting something on the counter, like doing the quick thaw with um, the bag and the cold bowl of water, sometimes there'll be like a little, um, just a little shard of ice that's still stuck to the fish. Usually you can just like pull it off, but if it feels like a little stuck on, there's nothing wrong with rinsing the fish. Um, I know there's, we sometimes have debates about this, like, should you rinse the fish or not? Should you rinse the chicken or not? But um, it's really not necessary. Um, there's nothing in the ice glaze that um, is going to hurt the fish or make anything um, taste off. I just don't like to have too much of the ice glaze on it because it can water things down and that's not what I'm looking for. So, um, and if two pieces of, if you're using two pieces of fish, do you make two separate pockets? I do make two separate pockets, um, first of all, because I think it's really just a nice, um, it's a nice thing to have a little individual packet uh, to open in front of you. It's like a little present. Like I said, it's sort of like wrapping a gift. Um, if you do want to do two fillets together, you absolutely can. I've certainly steamed, um, you know, larger pieces of fish um, or like whole fish like this before in foil or in papillote. 
Um, so the size doesn't matter so much, but that just know that that's going to change the cook time. This recipe is written for individual portions. Um, so, you know, my suggestion is just to keep with that, make one packet per portion. Um, and also you can assemble the packet, put it in the fridge, and then whenever you're ready, put it in the oven. You can always make it ahead of time um, as long as you're using fish that, um, you know, you've defrosted overnight. Like I said, I defrosted this on my counter um, in a cold bowl of water right before the event. So I had to cook it right away. But if you defrosted it overnight, you can assemble the packets and then cook it for dinner or cook it for breakfast in the morning, whatever you want to do. So amazing. And then how big was the piece of cod that you're cooking, would you say? So this was, um, if, I mean, it's all of our, all of our fillets are cut to six ounce portions. So they all have different shapes and sizes. If you've never had a piece of Pacific cod from us yet, um, sometimes they come out to be, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of like, if you're asking for dimensions or, or weight, um, but the piece I had was like about that big, maybe like, like a big fat harmonica sized piece of fish. Um, so it was pretty thin because of that dimension. Um, and that's why I'm only cooking it for 10 minutes. Um, I've seen pieces of Pacific cod that are super chunky, that look more like a really, really fat bar of soap. Um, I hope you enjoy these comparisons, like a harmonica and a piece of soap, um, but like a really chunky piece of cod. Those will take longer to cook, um, maybe up to 15 minutes um, being steamed in the oven like this, um, just because, you know, it, it, the centers need more time to cook through. Awesome. Um, and then can you use foil instead of parchment paper? A hundred percent. Um, if you're using foil, you, it'll be a lot easier to crimp the edges because you don't have to be so, um, diligent about pleating. It'll just kind of crimp in on itself. So yes, a hundred percent use aluminum foil. If you like, it'll make a really delicious meal. Um, just a little shinier. So. <laughs> and then can you use any other fish? Yes. Absolutely. Um, I love using Pacific cod for this recipe because, um, as I mentioned earlier, cod has such a high, um, has like a relatively high moisture content, and that can make it sort of tricky to cook using like a searing method or broiling um, or grilling. But using like a moist heat, like steaming and papillote, um, I think it's really really beautiful. All of the extra moisture just makes it super flaky. Um, however, any fish works for this. Skin on sockeye, skin on coho, Pacific halibut. The only one I would recommend not using this method for is rockfish. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think rockfish is so much better with other methods. It's like the punchiest fish that we have other than sockeye. So I think this method is a little too delicate for it. It's not like a good balance, but you can absolutely cook any fish using this method. You just need to make adjustments for cook time. Um, the same way you want to adjust for different sizes of fillets, you know, 10 minutes versus 15 minutes for like a thin piece of cod versus a really chunky one. Um, with If you're using something like uh, coho or sockeye salmon, those are going to cook faster um, or cook better when they have less cook time. Um, I like my white fish medium. I find that that's when they're flaky and perfect with wild salmon. I prefer things a little more on the medium rare side. So I tend to cook them a little bit less than white fish, if that makes sense. Um, but you can absolutely mix and match what kind of fish you're using for this. Feel free to mix and match vegetables as long as they're quick cooking broccoli is not a quick cooking vegetable unless it's been blanched already. So frozen vegetables typically are blanched first. So almost any frozen vegetable, you can consider a quick cooking vegetable because they're, um, you know, pretty much ready to eat right out of the bag. Um, maybe a little, a little crunchy, but, um, yeah, uh, I'm answering questions that you did not even ask at this point. So, <laughs> <clears throat> um, there were a few more. Do you usually use high temperature for the fish? I know you, I think you had mentioned 350. I've done, well, I'm using 450 today. I have in the past used a range of temperatures, 350, 400, 425, 375, anywhere between 350 and 450. 
um, it should, this method should work. You just might need to adjust the temperature, adjust the cook time by a minute or two either way. Um, because the fish is cooking in a packet, the actual temperature is not so important. You just want a hot oven. Doing this at a lower temperature than 350, you're not going to get much steaming action. Doing it at a higher temperature than 450, you're just going to burn the packet before the fish actually cooks. So um, there are a few different and papio recipes on the Wild Alaskan Company cooking blog. Um, so you'll notice there's a discrepancy in temperatures. That's totally normal. Just go with whatever the recipe is telling you because it's designed around that oven temperature. Um, but it doesn't really matter. I can do this uh, recipe in like a 375 degree oven and it'll turn out just as good. This is just cooking it a little bit faster because it's a little bit hotter, so. And there was one more question about the um, the cod getting tough in the middle of the center of the filet when pan frying. Do you recommend baking to avoid that or is it just being cooked too long? Um, I find that happens for, that happens to me too when I'm cooking cod um, on the stove top. If I'm doing something like a sear, I much prefer using Pacific halibut. I do, however, like using Pacific cod um, if I'm cutting it up into uh, like pieces, if I'm making tacos, for example, and just doing a pan fry. Um, so that can help if you want to um, continue using Pacific cod for any sort of pan fry, um, where some things like breaded or dusted, um, but baking will help um, prevent that inside of the cod from becoming tough. Um, and then also, like I said, this is, if you really are struggling to get cod to become this really beautiful, tender, flaky fish, this is the method that I think is my go-to. I also really like using cod in a chowder. I know that kind of sounds like I'm devaluing cod by saying like, just put it in a soup or, uh, you know, so you don't even notice it. That's like not what I'm saying at all. It's got a really nice texture. It's just there's something about it that can make it really tricky to sear um, depending on the piece you get. Um, it's not all cod, it's just like the specific musculature of the fish. Um, but steaming it is always like insane, like really tasty. Um, there's another recipe that we have on the blog for um, that's like Cantonese style steamed cod. Let me see if I can pull that up really quickly and drop it into the chat. Um, this is the one of the recipes that I recommend to people when they are really struggling because it's super easy and super delicious and it will almost make your cod um not taste like lobster but like have a really lobstery bite um it like really enhances the fish um rather than trying to fight against its natural uh qualities so that's a really fun one to try um I'm sure you have more questions but it's about 10 minutes after I've put the fish in the oven. So let me go ahead and check on it. Um, let me grab my oven mitts. All right, someday, if you want to switch over to the other camera, um, I can do a nice little reveal here. Someday we'll have a camera that can register smells. So what I'm actually going to do is first see how done this is in the center. I have an instant read thermometer. See if the temperature is looking good. It went too far. Yeah, this should be about right here. Um, if you don't have an instant read thermometer, don't worry. You can always um, skip this and just open this packet up to see how flaky the fish is. That's the foolproof, foolproof measurement of when fish is done. So I can already see that this fish is falling apart perfectly right here. Um, that is what I'm looking for. I don't even need to flake it to see that it's flaky. So um, let me transfer this to a serving plate or serving bowl. You could also just serve it right in the packet like this if you want to feel a little extra fancy. I don't know if that's fancy or not, maybe lazy, <laughs> but otherwise just go ahead and slide the meal into a bowl like this. Don't forget any of the juices that have formed in the packet. Just move my baking sheet so I don't burn myself. 
And for the moment of truth, let's get flaken. Oh, that just like literally slid off the fish. That is perfect. And this is why I love steaming Pacific cod. It is the fish that just gets incredibly flaky, more so than any other fish uh, that we offer, um, including Pacific halibut. So let me take a bite of this. Mm. That is delicious. The broccoli was a little hot, so I didn't keep it in my mouth, but the fish is perfect. And the broccoli is nice and tender. Even though I didn't cook it before putting it into the bag, I put it in when it was thawed from frozen, uh, just like in a cold bowl and then into here and it's perfectly cooked. So this is a really great technique if you have any vegetables in the freezer that you've been meaning to use. You don't even need to go out to the store to buy new stuff. Um, let's see, any questions? Let me, give me a second to chew, but we're ready to uh, talk about this more if you want. Um, we did have one question on what temperature did the thermometer read? So I had the thermometer, it was about 125. Uh, you can do anywhere between 125 and 130 on this, and that should be about a medium fish. You can always check it a little bit earlier if you're not sure. It's always better to check it sooner rather than later, but 125 or so is a good um, a good temperature to, to aim for with white fish. Um, if you're doing salmon, maybe between 115 and 120 is, is a good place to start. Um, and then if it's really not done enough, you just have to fold it back into the packet. It doesn't have to be perfect. Stick it back into the oven for another minute or two and then let it fit, let it finish cooking. So mm -hmm. all right. Well, if you don't have any other questions, um before I maybe I just wanna I I do want to mention why this method really works, not just for Pacific cod, but for any species of lean fish. It There's just really gentle heat that builds up in that packet um, in the form of steam. You see, they, I put no liquid into that, and there's so many juices that are formed in the bottom of my bowl here. And that's all coming from the fish, from the vegetables, from the lemons, which are a little bit um, more like wrinkled up now that they've given up some of their um, moisture. And um, this just really infuses the entire dish with aromas. So you don't really need to add um, that much salt if you don't want to. Um, I do like seasoning my fish, um, but it, there's so much flavor in here already that you don't need salt. Um, and you don't need to add much richness. You could absolutely add a little pat of butter right on top. You could add a dash of cream depending on what kind of ingredients you're using, but it doesn't need it. This feels super satisfying. It doesn't feel like you're um, making a healthy thing just to make something healthy. It just feels like something you actually want to eat. Um, so that's why it's one of my favorites. If you're a beginner, I think it's um, just a really gentle way to cook it, much easier than just putting it on a sheet pan, I think, if you want to get the fish perfect. Um, and I'm not saying you can't mess this up. If you leave it in the oven for too long, it will get tough and rubbery and overcooked but you have a little bit more of a grace period because it's in its little protective um, envelope. So um, if you're more of a pro, feel free to use this as a canvas for um, trying different liquids, trying different combinations of ingredients, um, something like coconut milk with curry paste and ginger, cilantro, maybe some bok choy, that'll make it a little bit um, like richer and more vibrant. Um, you could do something like white wine, zucchini, pesto, like olive oil, a little bit of a riff on this um, to keep it more like Mediterranean and a little lighter. Um, but yeah, any flavor profile, any liquid, a quick cooking vegetable or two, and then you basically have um, a meal you can make infinitely with infinite combinations. So um, yeah, if anyone has any other questions, now is the time. Otherwise, we're going to be closing out here. Last question, Kat. Um, could you use this recipe for scallops? Scallops? I would not. Um, you can. I've never tried it. But um, if you happen to have weather vane scallops in your uh, fridge right now or freezer, um, they are 
a million times better seared. Um, and if you don't know how to sear, then um, I will make sure to add a searing live event in the next uh, month or so, because the scallops are just so delicious when they're seared. There's so many sugars in there that naturally caramelize um, that are kind of lost if you try to steam them. Now I've had steamed scallops before and they can be delicious, but I think it's a little bit, it's just, you're going to be happier if you sear them. And um, that's, that's what I'm sticking to. Don't, don't steam them. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, amazing. Think... Well, it, it looks amazing. It looks great. It looks wonderful. There's yeah. a lot of love for your dish right now. Great. I'm so hungry. I cannot wait to eat this. So let's close out here. Um, for those of you who are Wild Alaskan Company members, we have an exclusive member special running right now for yellow eye rockfish. Um, so yellow eye rockfish is a large species of rockfish much larger than the rockfish that you uh, would get in a wild combo box or a wild whitefish box. It's its own thing entirely. Um, it is a mild whitefish. I mentioned earlier that rockfish has a really robust flavor um, and is very strong for a dish like this. Yellow eye rockfish, it shares the same name. It's in the same family, but it's a completely different fish. Um, it's much closer to Pacific cod in flavor, um, but it's probably a little bit more delicate and flaky than Pacific cod. And in, in, um, like it'd be perfect for pan searing or baking or broiling. So that is a member special that's available right now. The link is in the chat if you're interested in adding a couple of those to your next box. Um, it's, it's a new addition, pretty new addition to our offerings. Um, and I know for those of you who added it to your box, the first time we offered it, um, you were really into it. And I also am. So that was really uh, cool to hear. So um, if you're not a member yet, we do have a special offer for you. Um, if you become a member today and use the code LIVE25, that's L-I-V-E 25, you'll get $25 off your first amazing box of fish from Wild Alaskan Company, just like the one I told you about. Um, or, and you get access to exclusive member specials like the one I told you about. So you can sign up on the Wild Alaskan Company homepage. The link should be in the chat right there. Um, and yeah, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you next week. I believe we're making easy baked fish cakes. Um, so this is something that you can meal prep with, stash in your freezer, or just eat right away if you're, if you're ready for it. So um, hope to see you there. Live wild. <laughs>